Good evening, Nation's Corner family, friends and fans, John in South Jersey here again with yet another in our Nation's Corner on location WrestleMania week interviews leading up to that big event going on in Philadelphia in my area here in the first weekend of April and continuing this our series of interviews with talent you need to know and should know especially going into WrestleMania weekend because if you're shut out of all the WrestleMania events too expensive can't get tickets etc there is a literal ton of Tons upon tons of independent and smaller promotions working in and around the Philly and South Jersey area coming up. And we're going to sit down with yet another one coming into the area that weekend. He is a stalwart and anchor, perhaps even one of the pillars of one CW wrestling out of Delaware. He is a multi-time champion there. And this is his first ever time with the Nation's Corner and with me on Nation's Corner on location. And I'm very glad he was able to take time and join us. He is the hand of the ranch. He is Sean Carlson. Gang, gang, baby. What's going on, man? How are you? Yeet, yeet. That's it. That's it. How you feeling, man? Good, man. Great. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so please, you can sit down with us at this time and, and uh, talk to us. Sean, about everything going on. Um, staying busy, it looks. Just from what I see um, on the social media, staying busy, yeah. which is always good. Yeah, well, I mean, at 1CW, man, we usually try to run 20 shows a year because we do a lot for charity. That's our main goal. 1CW is to do a lot for charity. So we run about, we try to run about 20 shows a year. So we're on pace to do that again this year. So that's busy just in general. But uh, also, I'm, I'm, starting to become uh, really big in the traveling market, I guess you could say. Uh, the wrestling independence got me bu busy. Uh, Next Up Pro Wrestling in Virginia, Fight Club in Maryland. Like so many companies have started reaching out and really putting putting me to work. So it's, uh, it's an honor and a curse. About time. About time. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I've seen you live many, many times, especially down there at the, the home arena, the Houston uh, Fire Department down in Houston, Delaware. And I still every time have to think and make sure I say it right because it's Houston, not Houston. Yeah. But so I, I actually met my wife. My wife was a firefighter at the firehouse. And uh, that's how we ended up meeting through wrestling. So I always say I owe wrestling everything for that. But uh, she, she, we actually met because I said Houston. And mm -hmm. she's like, it is Houston. And just went off on me. And I was like, who is this little, little girl talking to me? <laughs> little did you know. That's so cool. That's it. That, that, that is great. And, and, and it, it's a nice place and nice atmosphere that um, you and Sean Hardy and uh, all the other talent down there put on. Uh, folks, if you're down in that area, it's little in the middle of nowhere. But it is. Uh, it's worth the drive. I used to make the drive almost every month, anytime there was a show, and always had a very good time, very enjoyable down there by Houston. But let's let's talk about the fact that what do you say there, dude? Country coming to town, coming up to Philly in the big show. Yeah. Uh, coming up Mania Week. What do you got going on? Hopefully, you're Man. fully booked. Yeah. So. Um <laughs> So personally, I'm only doing. I have some other obligations to do that week. Right. So I'm doing. A, I'm doing earlier in the week. Uh, it hasn't been announced yet, so I don't want to break it. But apparently, okay. I am doing it earlier in the week. But the main goal is uh, four companies have come together um, uh, to do a big show April 5th. One CW is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're doing part of a show. Atlantic All Star Pro Wrestling. We're actually in their building in Woodbury, New Jersey, right around from Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, the only one of the only pro wrestling companies that actually is built in Philadelphia is a part of it, which is the Wrestling Independent. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really cool that they're going to be a part of it. And then, um, Jesus Rodriguez, aka Ricardo Rodriguez, his company, Three Legacies in Pennsylvania. So we're all four coming together. We're going to put on a banger, man. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll just say like the matches on this card. Uh, I, I'll leak some matches for y'all. Mm -hmm. You got O'Shea Edwards versus Ty Awesome for the One mm -hmm. CW Championship. Yeah, you got yeah. you got me and a young lady coming out of the Monster Factory named Stevie Brooks that I hand selected to be my tag partner. We're taking on Brian Idol and Natalia Markov in an intergender tag match. Nice. So there's nice. there's just two matches we just released today, and we haven't even released them to social media yet. We just said that's what's going to happen today. So really looking forward to those. Yeah, I was um, 
me and some of the other Nations Corner members were we were over at um, AAW show last week, um, their regular show, March to Glory. Yeah. Uh, we've had Mike, the promoter and owner, and their champion, uh, Tony Leanda, on talking about this all, uh, all for one show that you and uh, AAW and Three Legacies and Wrestling Independent are doing. And man, it, it sounds. Just, just from the the social media and the graphics so far, even not really any matches, just the people I'm seeing on that poster, man, I'm excited for it, and uh, it, it it's really going to sound. This is going to be the the seemingly the best of the best of the uh, the four promotions, and man, I'm hoping for some like like big time. Like I want to see AAW's champ Tony Leander, you know. Take on one CWs, take on three legacies, take on wrestling in the back. Now let's let's you know it's WrestleMania week, baby. Let's get something big. Let's get some just let's just go pardon my friends. Let's just go wreck shit for all these people that are here and do something. I love it. And and I think that's I mean, honestly, that's what we're all doing. We're all bringing in the best of the best talent to to have the best show possible. And and I'll be honest with you, the card that that I see everybody putting together. I'm literally jaw dropped that I'm on this card because that's how crazy these matches are going to be. Mm. Um, I can't speak for any other companies, but from what what the group chat blows up with all the time, dog, I'm just yeah. going to tell you one section. We have four sections of the show and you get it all for one price. So you have four mm. sections of the show, one price. And I promise you, any one of those hours are full worth what you're going to pay for for that seat for four hours. I absolutely have no doubt. And for those folks wondering, what we're talking about is the all for one show, the aforementioned uh, four wrestling promotions coming together. Ah, there we go. A little visual aid for the folks. Yeah. And that goes down, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, showing that's Friday night with um, seven o'clock doors, 8 p.m. bell. At, yes, sir. Uh, at the American Legion Hall. Where AAW? Oh no, I'm lives. lying to you. It's six o'clock. Uh, it kicks off at oh, six o'clock. No, okay, good. Getting the folks in and out because, of course, mm-hmm. you're up against SmackDown and the Hall of Fame that night. But yeah, yeah. Still, folks, absolutely get over there. And then they're running out of uh, AAW's building, which is the American Legion over in Woodbury, New Jersey. And you can contact anyone from any one of those four promotions about tickets. Also, um, check out their their respective social medias for your ticket links as well. But um, you're coming up here actually right before, um, yeah, right before Mania, March the 23rd. Yeah, March 23rd, we're coming up to the Wrestling Independent right in Northeast, or I think it's Northwest Philly, I guess, technically. Yeah. Um, but uh, Mike, like I said, Mike Fresh, he runs the Wrestling Independent, and that company is something, man. I, I've been a part of a lot of startups. Um, it, it, you can ask anybody. I'm big on I want indie wrestling to succeed. So anytime there's a new company starting up, I'm the first one to like, hey, how can I help you? What can I do to make your product better? And um, Mike Fresh is a good friend of mine, and he has got a card. And when I say he's got a card, he is working his butt off. And he's been hit with some crazy stuff, and he continually, continually just keeps coming up with aces. And, man, he is one of the, the pure, nicest guys in professional wrestling. So I love working at the Wrestling Independent. Like I said, I, I'm excited for it. Um, I know the cards changed up, so I was I'm advertised to wrestle Jay Sky, but I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna be wrestling somebody else. Oh, that's okay. Hey man, it's always card subject to change. We that's it. That. But it's still, but yeah, no, what what Mike especially and I was on board from the beginning because just like you and even our conversations face to face in the past, you know I'm a I'm a huge indie guy, have been, especially in this area. And yeah. uh to see something coming homegrown out of Philadelphia, not somebody else just coming in running the show and then you don't see him for another six months or whatever. But Mike's, you know, he's looking to rebuild that foundation, rebuild that that Philly independent wrestling scene that we honestly haven't seen in a while. And I'm I've already sent him a few messages on social media and stuff, man. I'm here. I'm I'm all for it. Um can't wait to be at the show with the 23rd. A lot of people on there, yourself included, that I, mm-hmm. I know and enjoy watching work, man. And I'm just looking forward to it. And again, man, let's just go out and wreck shit and you know put Philly back on the map. Um, what, uh, other things I was talking about 
or thinking about anyway with you is okay we 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 both know just because we've been in the area you know when mm -hmm. i say co when country comes to town house in delaware that you know that that southern kind of central area and if you look over my shoulder right there you'll see how strong my ties are to it yeah this kid, the picture sees it but that's a picture with me with the absolute law of legends talking about mark and jay the briscoe brothers rest in peace jay um yes. so what's that what was that or how has that been that you're you know you're working you know in and around the delaware area that um you know small independent show one cw and 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 some others and stuff but here you are now you're starting to branch out you're starting to um, for for lack of a better term uh make a name for yourself that you're getting this stuff talk about how that's been yeah so well like just to start it out man nobody like nobody can ever say that delaware wrestling is is on a downturn because we have the briscoes and rest mm -hmm. in peace jay but between Jay and Mark, Jay and Mark have carried the banner for Delaware wrestling for so hey, long. Man, Sandy Fork versus fucking everybody. Everybody. And, you know, uh, Jay Jay told me one time we were work. I, I worked uh, a free show in Seaford for a boys and girls football team where we were trying to help them get jerseys. And so our school put on a free show and Jay Briscoe showed up and he donated money. And uh, Jay looked at me and he said, man, I guess you will be the third toughest motherfucker from Delaware yeah. wearing camouflage. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, you know what? That's fair. That's I'll take that. I'll take that. High, high praise indeed. Especially yeah. So, and Jay has strong ties to our independent. You know, he's in the one CW Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. uh, but he has strong ties throughout our students. He trained with Ty, or he trained Ty originally. You know, um, mm -hmm. so many, so many strong ties, and we love Mark. And uh, I've had a conversation with Mark. He's going to become part of, or not. I shouldn't say he's going to become part of our school, but he's going to be stopping by a lot more often. Um, so that's pretty cool. And we just, I love Mark and Jay, I, you know, rest in peace, Jay. He's, he was, mm. he was such a mentor to a lot of people, but, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's been different. You know, uh, I am a big hometown guy, so that's why I focus on trying to help the community so much, but it's been pretty cool getting to stretch out and go different places. I got to debut at the monster factory earlier this year and they, they're bringing me back a couple times this year. And, um, there's a lot of cool things happening for me, man. And, it's it's pretty cool when I can work a fight club show and people come up to me and they're like, oh man, you, you know, I've seen your stuff. And I'm like, eh. or like somebody will come up to me and be like, you're the vet. And that still blows my mind because I'm like, I'm not, bro. I, I'm not. <laughs> but uh, it, it's all just super cool. And I have so many people to thank for it. But really, honestly, if it wasn't for Mark Haro and what he does for the Workhorse Wrestling uh, Training Center, man, we none of us would be where we are. So yeah. it's all love for him. Yes, good old Junior. I, I, you guys make me laugh every time he's in a ring. He makes me laugh. He energy. He is hilarious. He is absolutely. But um, switch gears for a second. Yeah. When you started, now were you? Give me, give us a little of your background. Was it okay? So, so yeah, I have. I literally am Benjamin Button of wrestling, and I say that far too often. Um, so I started out as a big fan. Uh, I went to a lot of different indie shows. And then this was probably, I want to say 2014, right before everybody else, you know, really got into it. I started doing podcasts for the independent scene. Right. And um, I got doing that. And then one day we, uh, I was doing an interview with a guy. He was starting his own company in Baltimore. And it was called Baltimore Championship Wrestling. Right. And when we got done the interview, I was telling him some things. I'm like, hey, man, you know, you're new to this. I'm new, but you're brand new. You don't even understand independent mm. wrestling. Right. Um, so we had a conversation and he's like, you want to become a partner with me? And we had a lot of talks and a lot of negotiations and we finally mm -hmm. settled it. So I became a promoter. That was the first thing I did within independent wrestling. Wow. Okay. And then talk about jumping the, in with both feet, man. Oh, oh head first, head <laughs> first. Forget, um, and then taking bumps. Forget yeah. Taking yeah. Bumps. That's, forget taking bumps. That e that's easy. Being owner or promoter. The only bump you're taking is to your wallet. Yes. <laughs> um, and so we did the first show and going into it about 10 days before the first show, um, the booker was also a wrestler at another wrestling company in Maryland. And he got pulled. He, he got told that if you work there, you can't work for us no more. All this stuff. Oh, man. So I got put, I got handed the book. The guy was like, I know nothing about independent wrestling. You're the booker now. So within a matter of two months of being in 
independent wrestling. I was a promoter and a booker. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then uh, that, that lasted for a year. And right at the end of that year, um, my partner, I, I liked him. He was a nice guy, but he was a scumbag. He didn't pay his taxes. So we lost our Maryland license. Oh, so yeah, I got screwed on that. And I literally, uh, I literally, you know, was done with it. And then as I was done with it, Sean Hardy was like, I'm coming back. And so me and him went to dinner with another guy and we all sat down and we came up with bringing back relaunching one CW. And we were talking and I was just starting to train under Matt Wilde to become a manager. And they said, Hey, do you want to be the manager of this new influx of talent? And I was like, yeah, man, let's do it. So Mm -hmm. promoter, booker, new company, manager. Uh, During COVID, I really thought about quitting wrestling. I really thought about being out of it, selling everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a couple of people reach out to me. Uh, Adam Chandler was one. Mr. Grimm was one. Sean Hardy was one. And my wife was one. All Mm -hmm. four of those. They all said, hey, man, you you do too much for the, the business. You can't just quit. And so... Instead of quitting, I started a wrestling school where I was the owner and the first student to sign up and uh, hired Mark Haro as the uh, head trainer. And the rest has been history since then. Okay. All right. Well, that's certainly, that's certainly quite a story. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely different. Wow. I mean, I, I went from, you know, like you, uh, you know, fan in the stands, in the stands, in the seats, um, and and as we all know, especially with independent wrestling, you spend enough time, you get to know people, you get to know yeah. other fans, you get to know wrestlers and stuff like that. And similarly, I was approached, I've been approached a few times about working with other independent promotions and, and stuff like that. And always took the opportunity to and you know, and, and had a lot of fun. But man, to go that that route, well, I, I never taken bumps. So my fan my I always told anybody I worked with up front, dude, I'm a fan. I'm not going to tell you how to do a match. I'm not going to tell you, you know, how to work your spots. And I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that. I said, I'll give you the fan perspective, but it's worked out pretty well. And uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it, but talk about, talk about this wonderful woman. That is your wife that puts uh, up with all of your antics and by far. And folks, if you go to a one CW show or any show that, that Sean's on and trust me, you will he- hear her before you see her and you'll have to look hard because she's about this tall. Yeah. And you don't think a voice that loud comes out of a body <laughs> that big, but God bless you. Do. She is absolutely your biggest fan. Probably drowns out even your beautiful baby girl who is cheer, trying to cheer just as loud as mommy. But talk about her for, for a second, if you would. Yeah, dude, honestly, I'm blessed, right? Um, I won't sugarcoat anything. If it wasn't for my wife, I probably still wouldn't be on this earth. Um, she is my rock. I love that woman to death. Uh, I, I literally couldn't do anything without her. Um, I first seen her, uh, we were setting up the ring at the house, the firehouse the first time. And uh, I used to take my dog with me and it was me, Miles, I had a chihuahua that I would carry everywhere with me. It was me, Miles, and my chihuahua, and the fire alarm went off. And so this little short woman starts running across the building. And her and anybody who knows my wife, she has huge honkers. And them things are just flopping in the wind. And I was like, bro, that's going to be my next wife. And Miles said, shut up. You can't say stuff like that. Right. And uh, th- that night we had a conversation, the one I mentioned, Uh, I went to dinner the next weekend with a couple of my friends and she happened to be at the same restaurant. Mm. And so when we left, she messaged me on, she messaged me on Facebook and was like, was that you? And I was like, yeah, that was. And we never stopped talking. She has been my rock. Um, We, we both made a lot of sacrifices for each other, but legitimately that if it wasn't for her and I can, I can say this wholeheartedly and everybody will back me. If it wasn't for her, one CW wouldn't be where it is. The workhorse training center wouldn't be where it is. A lot of these wrestlers that that are in one CW, they wouldn't have the career they have without her because without her, there's no me. Without me, there's there's not a lot of this. So she is the big the big stone behind a lot of this stuff. And I, I can't I can't speak highly enough of her, man. Mm. Very, very cool. Very cool. She deserves all her flowers just from what I've seen of her and, and interacted with her at the one CW shows. Yes. Uh, she absolutely deserves all of that and more. Um, I agree. 
and and uh yeah um it, and it's nice to hear about people that have strong support have strong backing you know at home you know and yeah. this, and this crazy thing called independent wrestling you know it, it everybody it, it seems everybody gets into it for for various reasons but they all have that passion to perform that passion to test themselves and that can be rough on family that can be mm-hmm. you know you know we we we've heard even you know at the highest levels stories of people you know the the missed birthdays funerals events you know mm-hmm. sporting events you know and to have that support i think is really important and should be celebrated a lot more than it is so i always make a point for when i do interviews with folks to to talk about you know who who are who are there behind the scenes people who's the ones that do it for them i mean you folks are out performing in the ring and you're accessible and we cheer and we boo and all that and we can do meet and greet and shake a hand and take a picture and stuff but there's an important support system at home that allows you to to come go and chase this crazy thing of professional wrestling as well so yeah man like my wife she's every saturday when i'm traveling she's she's got my daughter on Mm -hmm. monday and wednesday nights when we're running class she has my daughter um, she is the full, full-time mom on that. Like she doesn't get the break I get, I get two hours, three hours away here and there. Mm. You know, when I'm traveling, I get the day away. She doesn't get that. And so I try to do everything I can to give her the breaks she deserves. Um, at the Christmas. So at, every year around Christmas, we do a Christmas party at our school. And one of my new students was sitting next to me and we were having dinner, you know, just BS and, um, cutting the crap. And, uh, his, uh, I had two of my favorite students next to me and I looked at the one's wife and I said, six figure contract right now would you let your husband travel and do wrestling and she was like yeah in an instant just she was like i can do this he can do that i don't care and they have a baby on the way so that's why i was asking her right because he needs to start getting in that mental spot of he's going to be missing stuff Mm -hmm. and if he doesn't want to do i'll i'll tell everybody right if you don't want to be a traveling wrestler you don't have to be if you want to work at one or two promotions this that's what you can do but just know that it's a hobby for you and it's not it's mm. not for everybody and that it can be a hobby. And I think we get so caught up in the I'm the traveled guy and I'm the guy that does this and I'm the guy that does that. There's nothing wrong with being the 40 miler guy who does once, twice a month. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Just know where you're at in, on the card. And just know where you're at in life. And that's OK. Um, you know, he that person chooses their family more times than they'll choose wrestling. And that's OK. And it's OK to not be fully committed to this crazy dream. Um, me, I'm fully committed and my wife knows it. And my wife will say all the time, I hate this sometimes, but you got to do it. I turned around and asked the other student the same question. I said, I asked his girlfriend, I said, six figure contract right now. What would you do? And she said, I'd leave him. And I looked right at him. I was like, this is not for her. This business is not for her. You need a strong one. Ryan Vox. I will always quote Ryan Vox for this. Ryan Vox sat. we were, we had a big thing with him when I was with my ex-wife. And she hated wrestling. And we were divorcing over a hundred other things, but wrestling was one of them. And when we were sitting there, Ryan Box looked at her and he said, it takes a really strong woman to be a wife in pro wrestling. Clearly, you're not strong enough to do this. And, and that's true, man. Like, you need to be a fully committed, strong woman to be, and a strong man to be with, you know, a partner in general. Yeah. yeah. You need to have a great partnership with people. Um you know, everybody on the, everybody's got different, everybody's got different tastes. You'll get hit on constantly, expect no matter who you are, you'll get hit on by somebody and you got to have that trust with your wife or your partner. And and it's, it, this business is tough and it can rip people apart. Mm. So you gotta, you gotta be a teammate with your teammates. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and to hear that you two are not only uh surviving this all but thriving and 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 keeping the things moving forward is is absolutely fantastic to hear yeah man um tell me more who is the hand of the ranch yeah so um during covid right um so this is where i got the inspiration so i w- i used to be a manager named money mark carlson and that was a rib on me becoming a promoter I was a money mark. That's what everybody called me. So I turned right. real life into that. Mm-hmm. Um, so during COVID, I uh, I really got back into my old roots. I used to ride horses all the time. Me and my ex-wife had a horse farm together. Um, I used to rodeo back when I was in high school and stuff. 
And so I really dug into my roots of who I was during COVID. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it like that, but I broke the boots back out, you know, just did more stuff that I used to do. And uh, I started watching this show called Yellowstone. And I was like, man, Rip would be a hell of a wrestling character. Wouldn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't he? Between like maybe him? Um, Jamie is absolutely the, the heel piece of shit yes. manager. Um, uh, but yeah, Rip is a wrestler. Absolutely. Maybe him. And uh, I, I hate to say it because he's not really built for it, but Jimmy would be the ultimate baby face. You would right. have to like not root for that guy because right. you know, just he seems so hapless and stuff and good things just keep happening to him. But anyway, go on, go on. So no, if you go back to the original group when we came in, mm. Mark Paro was G Mark mm. Jr. Dangerfield was right. Rip. That was the whole identity of him. He was supposed to be Rip. Right. I was supposed to be Casey. Okay. And okay. Wyatt was supposed to be Jimmy. <laughs> okay. That makes that actually makes sense. Okay. You see, we're, we weren't yeah. dead on to the character, but that was the right. idea. Right. And when I started watching that, I was like, man, you could really bite into this as a wrestler. You know, you could really become a person like this. And so that's where the ranch hand gimmick really came from. I was like, man, there's a lot of cowboys in wrestling, but there are no ranch hands. There are no guys who will say I'm the hardest worker in this locker room. And I take that very serious. I train three times a week um, at the school. And it's not like, you know, we don't we don't do that thing where like I'm the owner. So I just show up and do whatever I want. No. I'm in line. I train with everybody. I, I'm doing what everybody asks. So I always say I'm the I'm the fucking top of the barn because that's my whole idea was the ranch hands, the head of the barn. And that and that's who I want to be. And that's who I portray myself as. So that's where it kind of just came from. And it kind of just clicked and kept going. Very, very cool. I, I always like hearing how the how the performers come up. And, and figure out because it, it, in my experience it comes down to two things you're either your your character is something you've always wanted to be or portray you know part superhero part comic book or something like that or it's you as a person turned up to that higher level to that 10 12 15 level and um with you i figure it's you just turned up that much more and uh, hearing that you drew it from from Yellowstone, which, of course, uh, incidentally, is one of my favorite television shows. I wish Amazing. they come out with the other half of this. I know, season. right? God, they, they, they show me another friggin' marathon around the holiday oh. that I legitimately I'll sit there. And I've seen every episode now. From the <laughs> but you watch it anyway. You watch I it anyway. Still, still sit and watch it and, and all that. But that's. That's for another. <laughs> that's for another interview. So, so when we that. when we sit our when we sit our students right, they come in and they have this idea of what they want to be right, mm -hmm. and we always make a funny nickname for them. That's the first okay. thing we do. And then we and then we make a funny gimmick like, oh, you're gonna be. For example, there's one guy coming up. We're like, you're gonna be a bear. The whole idea is you're a bear. You just come out and roar, right? Okay. And so he's been doing it like at the school for months now. And then I look at him and I'm like, okay, that's not really you. But now we know where you're at mentally, that you can buy into something. Mm. And so now this is you cranked up to 10. This is, I've talked to you enough. I've hung out with you enough. This is you cranked up to 10. Let's do that and let's try that. Yeah. And then usually they can buy into that. But yeah. a lot of times if you talk to somebody, especially a young guy coming into business, they instantly think of, oh, I want to be Roman Reigns. I want to be Randy Orton. Well, listen, kid, you're not going to be Roman Reigns or Randy Orton coming in. So let's just pump the brakes a little bit. You come you come here, you're going to have a stupid nickname and a silly gimmick for about six months until we really see where you're at and where you are mentally. And if you can buy into that, then I know you can buy into what I'm about to tell you, who you are seriously cranked up the head. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And that goes to, um, and, and we've heard, and, and you and I have both heard, over the years, so many just horror stories about so many bad people and bad schools uh -huh. and um, guys basically just, you know, taking people's money and and some of the, frankly to me, horror stories that some performers uh, have gone through. You know, oh, the guy charged me $1,500, but, well, you, you, you can't do a wrist lock. What, 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 yeah. did you, what did you pay for? Or, you know, what's your character? You know, you're showing up in your in your training T-shirt and your sweatpants. What You know, what's your gear? What's your gimmick? And uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I, I, and and 
it's nice to hear that there are, and, and it's becoming more the norm, thankfully, that there are organizations, there are schools and, and promotions out there that aren't just taking people's money, that they're, you know, they're training people to um, respect the business and learn the proper way. And uh, that's always encouraging to hear. And that sounds like yes. exactly what you guys are doing. Yeah. So one thing we do at our school that I really love that I think more people should adapt to is we have a, we have basically a banding system, which is kind of like karate. Mm. So like, you know, karate has different color belts. Sure. We have different color bands. And with every band, you can now do something in the wrestling business. So you start out with no band. And then once you earn a white band, it's like, okay, well, you've clearly learned enough that you could actually referee matches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now you've gotten your green band. Now you can do battle Royals. You can do Royal rumbles. You can do stuff like that. Cause you know enough to be able to do that. Mm. Heel band. Now you can start wrestling matches with our supervision. Purple band. Now you can go out and get your own bookings. Now you can go do your own thing. Mm. And I think a lot of people think like, I, so we get this a lot is, oh, well, that's babying them. No, it's, it's a graduation system of us making sure our kids are good before we let them go out there and hurt somebody or hurt somebody else. I'm not wrestling your buddy that just trained mm. for six months and thinks he can do everything. Mm. That makes no sense. <laughs> that's how you get people hurt. Right. You know, right. yeah, our class, our class is year long. Yeah, we don't we don't have sessions. We don't have advanced classes. We work on stuff constantly, mm -hmm. but it's because we have different bands and how to get there. And I think that's a big thing missing within wrestling. There's no criteria for what makes a wrestler and what doesn't. And I think that's tough. And I think that goes back to what you were saying with people stealing money. Yeah, you can pay fifteen hundred dollars, learn how to body slam somebody and somebody can say you're a wrestler. And now you show up to a show and say, I'm a wrestler. I was trained by this guy. You know, what's the criteria? Who said like who said that guy's God? You know what I mean? Mm. So I think it becomes really tough at that point. Right. I agree. I agree. And like I said, it's nice to see now that 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 it's not as much about that anymore. It's you know, it's about making sure that the, the young people coming in are uh are getting properly trained, are getting, you know, the right the right teaching, the right schooling. Um, I'm very fortunate. I live in the same town of Paulsboro of the Monster Factory. It's literally five blocks from my house and uh, have become quite good friends with uh, Missy over there and, and Danny and and have been to dozens upon dozens upon dozens of their shows. And, and, yeah, they, seeing, and seeing their seeing their students, you know, from the very you know beginning in their in their showcase shows as they move up and and even move on to bigger and better things and, and seeing them out, seeing the progression is always that that still after all my years, I'm I'm a I don't even want to say I'm a 45 year wrestling fan and a, probably about a 35 year uh boxing combat sports mma fan and the biggest thrill i still get to this day is seeing the someone brand new and and following that progression and seeing them now and it's happened dozens upon dozens of times for me over the years you know seeing them on that bigger stage or on that bigger promotion or on my tv every week and i'm like yeah i get i still get a charge out of that seeing them you know seeing them make it knowing what they put put them in because i saw them when they were brand new yeah and and i and for those that are chasing that dream absolutely i will do whatever i can to help you along that way help you get that you know get to that next step get to that where you want to be but you made a, a very interesting point and let's face it wrestling in general is has not been any hotter than it is right now from the very yeah. top on down through the smaller promotions through the independence dude wrestling for all you a-holes that ever wanted to give me or sean or anybody else crap about being a wrestling fan yeah where the effing, we're the effing cool kids now yeah and we always have been you just haven't realized this so all you johnny come lately smell my vapors because some of us have been here and know That's what right. like and what it's about. But still, man, dude, wrestling is cool. Wrestling is hot. People are legitimately and 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 good thing, bad thing. Yes, WWE making and doing a ton of business and money. AEW doing a ton of business and making money. But man, it's it's almost like many other things. You know, you and I we talk about NASCAR a lot mm -hmm. when we when we message each other. You know, yep. you know, 
it, it, it was like, oh, I'm going to a race. Well, yeah, because you can only afford to go to one race yeah. a year because it's yeah. expensive. And, and and wrestling, you know, wrestling, especially on that, you know, those higher levels, man. You know, I as much as I would love to, I don't have a couple thousand dollars to put put out just out of my pocket for WrestleMania, you know, front row seats or anything like that. And that's why I've, I've always said is that for for what it would cost you for maybe not even a night out, maybe maybe a dinner somewhere, go see independent wrestling, and and you know it's still the best entertainment bang for your buck. Period. It's better than any movie because it's live action. And, and yep. at this point, you know, it's probably cheaper <laughs> than the night. <laughs> yeah. but, it's, but it's something fun, and especially um, you and a lot of other promotions, especially down there, one CW. It's, you know, they're physical, but it's not hardcore. It's not, right. that's, it's not death match stuff. You can bring the kids. They can cheer and scream, you know, and... And get interactive with the wrestlers and stuff, and it's a it's great family entertainment. Um, and you know, and in these days, you know, people are watching where and how they spend their money. Man, spend it on independent yeah. wrestling. Don't don't don't. You know, I mean, it's it's great to go see the big shows live and all that, but independent wrestling is still the best entertainment. Now, being that wrestling is so good, and you guys always draw great houses down there at the in, in houston and pretty much everywhere you go um is it hard and and i'm going to ask you to kind of float between performer and promoter here okay is it, hard, is it hard to figure out or or hard to to kind of plan a map of where and how you put on shows or where and how you want to perform as a wrestler in relation to that yeah so um, let, let's talk a little bit about the idea of keeping the crowd, right? Mm. The one big thing I love to say is, and I love this, and as a wrestler, I can say I've said it to promoters, right? I want to know what I'm doing. I want to know the story. What's, what, what's going to happen in six months? What is, where does the story lead to? And mm. I'll tell you right now, the, the, if, you, if I think of it, if I put out a six-month story, that thing's going to change 100 times within that six months. Sure. Because yeah. if I get bored with it, I think the crowd's going to get bored with it. Okay. So if I get bored with it in my head, thinking of it, mm. I, I think the crowd's going to get bored of it, right? And I think the one thing we try to do is keep stuff fresh, keep it moving, give them the spin, give them the thing they're not expecting, because and I think that's what draws us good houses, you know? I think people want to be surprised. I think people want to buy in. Now, we are lucky here. Um, we were talking about racing earlier. Delaware supports Delaware, right? Mm. Our dirt tracks get mm -hmm. major support. I see people at the dirt tracks that I don't see at the NASCAR race in Dover, mm -hmm. same, in same area. Yeah, we get love for our independent crowd, and when you bring in like a Bobby Fish, like mm -hmm. well, I got to wrestle in February, right. when you got people coming up to you going, "Hey, who's the guy you're wrestling? Never heard of him." That's that's crazy because they're like, "Oh, we love Branch Ann Carlson. He's on DSN every single week. Who's yeah. this guy who's been in every national yeah, promotion?" promotion. There is? Right. Yeah, yeah. What, what world do we live in? You know what I mean? So right. we we are very blessed here that it's it's more literally we support our own. We don't care about anybody else. So that's why we have such love in our area. Yeah. But that's just that's just our area, man. They think we're the big time. Um, I get stopped all the time now. My wife hates it. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the grocery store or something on a Sunday morning before people are in there. And some guy will be looking at me. He goes, you a cowboy that wrestles on DSN? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I am actually. <laughs> So it's uh it's different, man. But we support our own down here, so that's been always cool for me to have that. Um, we got to do a, luckily we got to do a show last year in Virginia, um, and that was cool because me and Ty main evented it, and it was different because you know that's not our normal housing crowd. But man, we drew three hundred people in there, and we blew the roof off that place with the same one CW roster down there. So man, just to be honest with you, like we just put a lot of hard work in and a lot of time in, and that. That pays off, especially when you have a great support system like we have from our fans, man. Yeah. No, that's very true. Like I said, you guys always put on a great show uh, down at 1CW um, and and spending the, the amount of time I uh, can down there and I'm um, planning on now, now that I've had uh, most of my medical issues taken care of. Yeah, man, we miss uh, you I'm down gonna, here, brother. I'm, I'm going to get down there, you know, me and my, uh, me and my new partner here. 
Me and my new I'm using, I'm using that in a match. You've already Absolutely. seen me do it once. This I'll is, use it. This is the most dangerous weapon in professional <laughs> wrestling right now. This is the AK9K. The AK9K. That's it. And 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 that's it's one of the things that I love about wrestling. Um, you can say, "Oh, I'm going to use that." I'm going to tell you this: get online because there's a lot of people that want to <laughs> put this, put use this on their opponent, and I'm I'm so, here for it. So, so funny story: we were doing a hardcore match one night. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was three on three, mm -hmm. and it was a hardcore match. It was me, Mark, and uh, Miles versus Ty. I want to say Rico Hendricks, and there was somebody else in there. I don't remember off the mm -hmm. top of my head. And Rachel is the girl who comes to every single 1CW show, and she also has a prosthetic leg. Right. And Rico hit me with a trash can, and I went right to her, and I didn't even think about it. And she looks at me, and she goes, here, and pops that some bitch off and hands it to me. Yes. And I'm like, well, shit, I got to use it now. If I say no, I, I, you know, I show that it's not real. So I turn yeah. around and... Rico's face, Rico just looked at me, what the hell? And I just hit up with it. He's like, did you just hit me with somebody's leg? Yes. Yes, you will. And and that's you know, let and let let any of the roster down there know that you know if I'm in the building, you know, I'm using it. <laughs> yeah, find out where I am because I will absolutely pop this right off. <laughs> um it, it it's it's carbon fiber and stainless steel so you're not gonna hurt it Jeez. I, just, Woo! I, I need it back because i'm gonna have to go to the bathroom <laughs> i don't want to crawl on the floor or nothing but yeah I, yeah I'll absolutely crack somebody with it i love that but uh and, and incidentally you you talked about racing briefly for a second i was supposed to be down by you at georgetown this weekend i had some other things come up but they're running <sighs> they're uh, georgetown's running the modified show there this yeah that i was supposed to be part of but that that's for another time i'll get back down there too i'm slowly getting back into all my normal routines well let me know when you're going down there because i'll go i, I want to go down there we, <laughs> I, we went down there a couple times last year mm -hmm. um and i wanted to take my daughter this year so we're taking my daughter to the nascar race this year oh okay. um you know for her first big race because we went to the yeah. 500 and she was so upset because our guy won and she <laughs> wasn't there <laughs> so I was like, we can go to Dover, and uh, I wanted to take her to Georgetown and see if she's going to be able to sit still first, but I think it's going to be too cold tomorrow night. So Yeah, yeah, to... yeah. and that, and they're calling, unfortunately, it sounds like it's going to rain, so I, yeah. I don't want to jinx them or nothing, but, you know, weather is, yeah. bad, weather is. but, um, well, I can't tell you how much fun this has been, Sean, yeah. Um, yeah. Letting the, you know, letting you get you and your story out, so let's recap it a little bit. Yeah. Um, what do you have come? You're going to be up here in Philadelphia, March the 23rd. Yep. So I got one CW next weekend. We're doing a new building in Harrington. So okay. we're got, we got a new building going on next weekend. It's it's, it's literally right down, near Houston. Right. Yeah. Is that down by the fairgrounds again? Where you got? Yeah. It? Yeah. So it's close. It's close to the fairgrounds. It's the new okay. Parks and Rec building. Uh, we're trying to raise some funds for them. Um, they just put a new building up, and the the guy came to us and asked if we could do a show. So we're doing a show there. Um, actually, honestly, a lot of my, a lot of my, uh, schedule is one CW because we're doing a lot in the next few months, but, uh, we, we got, uh, we got Harrington and then the wrestling independent March 23rd up in North or Northwest Philly. Mm -hmm. Um, then next up pro wrestling in Hampton, Virginia, and then, uh, WrestleMania show April 5th. Uh, we're back at one CW April 13th in Houston. And then April 20th is we, our TV deal is through Delmarva sports network. And they do a big Delmarva Sports Network weekend at the Harrington Fairgrounds where they give away a lot of free stuff. There's a lot of free things going on. And we do a student show there. So it's our workhorse wrestling school. Um, and since I'm the Del Delmarva Sports Network television champion, fingers crossed, as long as I hold it through there, I'll be, we'll be doing a big show there. And I'll be defending the title there as well. Cool. Yeah, talk about that for a second because you, you guys, you know, you're kind of big time now. Delmarva Sports Network uh, every yeah. week, I believe, right? They do yeah, so, yeah, every Monday night at 9 p.m. We're going head to head with Monday Night Raw, brother. <laughs> and then uh, and then Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. That's our main show, but they replay it in, uh, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Okay. Um that, that it so basically Del Marva Sports Network's like our local channel that has all our local sports. It hits Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia. But uh it's been pretty cool because we our numbers are pretty outstanding, if you ask me. Um they can only do by the month, but we get around 330,000 views a month. And 
that's that's crazy to me that yeah. those two shows you know divide that however you want those are right. those are big numbers for an independent company on an independent yeah. sports network if you really right. think about it well hey, man so. wrestling wrestling and television have always gone hand in hand they've always done very well together and i think it's fantastic that you you guys especially have this opportunity because that was i i came across it uh by accident uh, a friend of mine had sent me a link and uh for um uh something uh, it was sports related in that area but not nothing with wrestling and i'm right and, and i was on my computer i don't you know i'm all the way up here in in south jersey so i don't have that cable system or anything but i was able to click click on my computer look at this on and all of a sudden i'm scrolling i'm like once once he, i know these guys one cw yeah but i'm like holy shit here they are putting and i'm checking and so it, it, it's fantastic again in this age um yeah people can you know it's it's literally at our fingertips at the fingertips of our phone our tablets our computers wrestling from all over the world and for you guys to be able to have that presence that some you know let's face it a lot of other independents don't have man i think that's fantastic and hats off to you guys for for being able to to utilize and have that platform yeah, man. So, like, I always say this, right? Like, I love Title Match. I think Title Match is a great product. I love IWTV. I think that's a great product. I'm not taking anything away from those products. I think they're great yeah. products. I don't want. I don't want to sound negative on it. But what I'm saying is, um, those are wrestling fans, right? And when you see so much wrestling, you can only compete so much with other wrestling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we didn't want that when we went to a streaming platform. We wanted to be our own brand. And so when Del Marva Sports Network actually reached out to us to do the last Del Marva Sports Network day, um, we had had a TV deal with them prior. It just didn't work out. We had we had numbers and everything that just didn't work out. But when they reached out to us to do the DSN day, we did a tournament. And long story short, during the tournament, the guy was like, man, if you had TV, you could do this story and you could play it and it could make so much more sense. And I was like, yeah, I agree. And we came up with a new deal and we made the deal work. So – with the new deal, with everything going on, and with the app actually working now, because it didn't work at the previous thing, it was so much of a better thing, and now we're on our own network, right? So we're the only wrestling company on there. So when people are scrolling through and they click in wrestling, they're going to find us, and we're trying to draw new fans to our product. Like People can watch us, on, people could watch us on IWTV, great, but that's only wrestling fans in other, in other states. The wrestling mm -hmm. fans that are in Delaware are already coming to see us. You know what I mean? Right. So this is the casual fan that mm -hmm. uh, one of my dad's friends called me up one day. He goes, Hey man, I just watched you on TV. And I was like, mm -hmm. that was the coolest thing ever. Like I ain't talked to this guy in years and he's seen me on TV. So just something yeah. like that means the world to me. And it's been an awesome adventure. And I love Del Marva sports network and very blessed that they chose me to be their first champion. And me and Brian Morris had a hell of a story. And I always joke around with everybody that if it wasn't for me and Brian Morris, the whole TV deal wouldn't happen because we're the reason it happened. And that's yeah. what you, and, and yeah, you guys had some 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 killer matches leading up to all that, and and Brian's no slouch either. He, no, he, he is he, amazing. Yeah, he, he's a very another very talented guy in that area. That I'm I'm absolutely sure will be doing big things as he moves along in his career. Yeah, I agree. Brian Morris is um, there is not too many people I'll put over like a son of a bitch, but mm -hmm. that that guy that boy just gets it, and he yeah. is easy to work. Um, we did a 30 minute Iron Man match and we only called like three spots. The rest of it, we called yeah. like the ring. Yeah. Uh, we're sitting there calling stuff through the ref. He's just so easy to work with and mm -hmm. we have great chemistry. I love Brian. I think he's one of the most genuine people in the wrestling business as well. Mm. Point well taken, especially on his point. So um, we went through all the dates. What are you, what is, what does the rest of the year look like for Ranch Ann? Well, we got a ton of one CW stuff going yeah. on. I, well, no, what I, about I, you though? What about you? Oh, you've been, you've been a workhorse champion. You're the current yeah. um, Del Mar TV champion. Yeah. So are we gonna see maybe at some point, as long as Big Stevie Cool doesn't find a way to yet screw you once again, to finally get that main one CW championship strap around your waist? Maybe, maybe. You know, honestly, I won it for three seconds, so right. I've had it before. You I have. haven't had the tag. I haven't had the tag titles yet. So if I do, if some reason somebody knocks me off the DSN title, maybe I find me a tag partner. I can go after the tag titles. Okay. So I can say I've held every one CW championship. Right. 
No, but I'm 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 talking a little more than one uh, than three seconds. Because first of all, never mind. I don't want to go into it. <laughs> so, folks, get on Delmarva Sports Network and look back through the old shows and see what happened to yeah the poor, poor hand of the ranch here the night he won yeah. the W championship. But no, uh, let's let's. How about another run? I mean, I know that big Stevie Cool. He is a snake in the grass. And yeah, well, he's he he's been him. acting right lately. He's been acting right lately. Has he? So, Has he? Just, just the last month and a half. So, oh, maybe, okay. maybe he's back. Maybe he's back to normal. I don't know. Maybe he's back to normal. I, I still keep one eye on him. I, I got a side eye for him. Okay, keep him out of the side. Okay, but you know, let let the wife let the wife take care of him. So yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. Light, it's too light of work for you, but she would have some fun whooping his ass. So <laughs> that's it. So what? funny story, real quick. I, I want to I want to tell two funny stories, real quick. Okay. You'll get a kick out of both of them. So one night uh, we did a show in Selbyville, and there was a wedding up the road that my wife went, had to go to. Mm. So it had an open bar, oh boy. and. It was Alicia. I like, I like this one already. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it was a, it was Sean Hardy's wife's birthday. Okay. So we had already planned the cakes. Like, you know, she was going to be in the ring. They were going to give her a cake. So my wife shows up drunk. She is drunk. <laughs> and my wife, when she's drinking, she gets very loud and obnoxious. <laughs> um, and Chris Wilde and Hardy cut her off, unbeknownst to the women, that this was going to happen. And man, my wife is sitting there just going off and she's telling Hardy, she's like, you're a piece of sh Why would you do this to your wife? You're an asshole. I was like, bro, it's, it's a work. It's a work. Chill, chill, chill. Um, so that was hilarious about my wife. So real, real quick, you heard me earlier about my dog, right? I used to yeah. bring my chihuahua everywhere. So me, the hitman for hire, Mr. Grimm and Miles Millennium were booked at this show down in Florida. Okay. We're running late. We're about 20 minutes from the venue. My dog starts whining. I'm like, we, we can make it. Like, he's fine. We can make okay. it. We didn't make it. He shit oh, all in his little crate. Oh. He had this little bag. He shit all in it. It was covered oh. in him. Mm. So we show up to the show. I've got baby wipes. I'm cleaning him up, right? Right. So we put him in the bag. It's this big, it's called the River City Wrestling Con. Mm. And so I've got him in my backpack. There's, it's like a dog backpack. So he's fine. I'm not, right. not shoving him just right <laughs> in back there. But, uh. I, me and Elijah Burke are actually friends. I love Elijah Burke. I think he's a great person. We uh, we go way back. And so I see him, and he goes, Carlson, come here, man. And so I turn sideways to go between the tables, and uh, I knocked Vicky Guerrero's cup of her pens off the table. Hmm. And I turn to her. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. This is a new dog. Um, I'm not used to having him on my back. I'm really sorry. He has anxiety issues. And she goes, let me see the dog. And so I pulled... I pull my <laughs> my chihuahua out, and she starts kissing all over him. Oh my! And <laughs> Miles and Grim leave me, and I'm just standing there looking at Vicky Guerrero, praying no that I cleaned all the shit yeah. off of this dog. Nobody said no. Nobody sell nothing. No, just stand there and shut up. Don't do that. Oh my! Yeah, I just stared oh. at her, and she's like, "You want me to hold him while you go wrestle your match?" And I was like, "No, nah, nah, I got him. I, you can hand him back now." <laughs> Oh, so oh my that's God. my that's my big that funny story awesome. that I can't believe that's it happened. Awesome. That is awesome. Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let me. Oh. Anyway, um, Sean, how can the folks interact with you? Give us your social. I'm on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Ranch and Carlson. There's no two H's in Ranch and it's just Ranch and Carlson. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the lettering on Twitter or X, whatever it is. Right. And then Instagram is Carlson underscore nine, two, four, five. And just find me on Facebook. It's Sean Carlson. Very cool. Um, merchandise. You have a site yeah, I, merchandise? yeah, I'm on pro wrestling tees. You can just Google me on, or hit the little Google machine on pro wrestling tees. And you can find some mm -hmm. t-shirts there. You can get an official workhorse wrestling t-shirt, or you can get a, a Mark, uh, Sean Carlson t-shirt. I think there's there still go. some Mark Carlson, Mark Carlson t-shirts on there if you really, really want to go crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, man, go retro. You get an extra five bucks for it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, sure. This has been a lot of fun, man, and and letting you get out and uh, meet some of our fans and stuff and some folks that are definitely going to be looking to see you up here in the Philly area next month. Uh, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to spend with me, especially uh, after the long day of work and all that. Yeah, man. I I appreciate you, and I appreciate you for doing this kind of stuff, man. It, it doesn't go underlooked by a lot of our guys, man. 
-hmm. we appreciate guys like you who put this product on and do the hard work for us and make it easy for us to come on and put ourselves over to people. So thank you. Uh, it, it's it's duly noted, and uh, I just appreciate doing it, and I appreciate everybody who takes the time to sit down with me because normally our show is on a Saturday night at 7 p.m., which if everything's going well, everybody's working. So yeah, yeah. To, you know, so I always make a point to try to talk to wrestlers and stuff um, during the week or on uh, nights when they're not training or whatever. That's because you know if everything's going well, we can uh, you know we'll be seeing you live, not sitting here on a on the Zoom or on a <laughs> on a stream recording. So that's right. Thank you so much for joining me, Sean. Best of luck with everything. Say hello to the wife and the little girl for me. And uh, I hope at some point very soon I'll be seeing all of you live. And I just want Hell to yeah, man. I appreciate it. Me. Let me know when you come down to Georgetown, baby. We'll be there. Yeah. Okay, dude. I will let you all know right. about that. Thanks, all right, man. Gang, gang, gang. We'll see you, man. Yep. Yeet, yeet. Yes, folks. That was the hand of the ranch, Sean Carlson. And as I'm looking at my timer, it is time to go with this edition of the Nation's Corner on location. Follow us at the Nation's Corner and me at Twisted Metal Fab. And we will see you all at the shows.